Getting into the Pokemon trading card game is easier than ever before, but with dozens of products, multiple formats, and thousands of cards to choose from, where do you start? If you're building on a budget, then there's always the trusty theme deck. With a bit of cash and a lot of creativity, you can build something bold and battle ready. You're watching Deck Boss. Hi everyone, and welcome to Deck Boss, the show where we take classic theme decks and give them a competitive tune-up. This week, we're going to try and supercharge the Blazing Volcano theme deck from Lost Thunder. This deck will probably be familiar to the more seasoned players in the crowd because it's a favorite to pick up on PTCGO and grind in theme deck tournaments. As far as theme decks go, this is a solid pick with a well-established strategy, a powerful deck boss, and a lot of staple cards for the expanded format. Now, before we go any further, I do want to offer a quick disclaimer. This series is focused on more casual play, and by virtue of the fact that these are older products, it's almost exclusively going to be in the expanded format. This series is more for people just looking to start out and get the hang of deck building and playing the game. But hey, if you're tired of the standard format and cubing isn't cutting it for you, then you might also enjoy this series. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's crack this open and meet our deck boss. The Blazing Volcano theme deck is built around Entei. This shaggy dog cat thing is a basic fire type with 130 HP. Entei has two attacks. First is Fire Fang, which costs one fire energy and one colorless energy, and it does 20 damage while inflicting the burn status. Next, and the one we really care about, is Eruption. For two fire energies and one colorless energy, you do 80 damage base, and then both players discard the top card of their deck, and for each energy discarded, you do an additional 60 damage, for upwards of 200 damage. Now, as far as deck bosses go, Entei is a solid choice. In the theme deck metagame, where many of the other deck bosses are stage 2 Pokemon, Entei's high HP, instant playability, and high damage cap can let it outpace the competition. But Entei has some drawbacks too. Its first attack is almost worthless, and at 2 energy, it's kind of expensive. Second, Entei's eruption attack is also expensive, and while 80 damage base is solid for the theme deck metagame, it's less impressive in other metas where Pokemon GX and Pokemon V have nice, thick HP stats. Oh, and Entei's damage output is basically capped by how well you can manipulate your own deck, because there are few ways to ensure that your opponent consistently has an energy card on top of their deck. So, we've got a lot of work to do if we want to give our deck boss the best chance in the stadium. First, we need to find a way to pay the energy cost for Eruption quickly. And second, we need a way to consistently ensure that there's an energy card on top of our deck so that we can hit for at least 140 damage every time we attack. If we can do those things, then Entei can easily dispatch other one prizers and hopefully trade well against multi-prize Pokemon. So let's jump back into the theme deck and see what it gives us to work with. In terms of energy acceleration, Blazing Volcano includes this Blaziken from Dragon Majesty. It's a stage 2 Pokemon with an ability that lets you attach a fire energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. But because it's a stage 2, it's too slow to set up and it doesn't really hold its own as an attacker. So for ramping up our energy, we'll need to look elsewhere. As for manipulating our deck, we have the wonderful Mag Cargo from Celestial Storm. Its smooth over ability allows you to take any card from your deck and put it on top of the deck. So we can place an energy card on top of the deck to power up Entei's eruption attack. And thankfully, Mag Cargo is a stage one, so setting it up isn't too rough. Now, Blazing Volcano also comes with a healthy roster of staple cards, so let's have a quick look at what we've got. There's a great Pokeball package consisting of Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and Timer Ball. With these, you can search out just about anything you might need. You get a few good draw supporters in Lily, Professor Kukui, and Tate and Liza, which all have their own situational uses. Other notable supporters are Guzma, which is this deck's gusting card, and Mallow, which is basically a double mag cargo in supporter form. You get the ever indispensable switch, and a rescue stretcher to help recover KO'd Pokemon. And as for the rest, don't worry about it. 
Personally, I like to grab two copies of a theme deck because that will usually give you a playset of the core cards and at least two of the really solid ones like Ultra Ball and Guzma, for example. You can probably get most of the good stuff in this deck as singles, and anyway, we'll need to grab some singles to upgrade the deck. So really, you're good either way. And now that we've got the basics down, let's jump on over to PTCGO and see how we can upgrade this deck. Okay, so after a bit of work, I've put together an upgraded list which is all about allowing us to consistently hit a big eruption, but also gives us some options when Entei isn't the best play. The first major addition I made was a pair of Orangaroos. Orangaroo is another way to place a card on top of the deck, and paired with Mag Cargo can actually give us an Omni Search each turn while also priming Entei to attack. Heatran GX and Ninetales V are our backup attackers. If this is your first deck, then these are probably going to be your first big investments. Heatran gives you a pivoting option, allowing you to move energy around the board, and gives you that crucial GX attack, allowing you to hit damage levels Entei couldn't even dream of. Ninetales V is more of a tech option, allowing you to copy the opponent's powerful attacks and maybe gain some advantage in that way. Volcanion is here to give us some early energy acceleration, or a secondary attacker that also only gives up one prize like Entei. Ideally, if you can, you want to get this out as early as possible in the game, and it's a good reason for why this deck probably wants to go second most of the time. Tapu Koko Promo is there mostly for its free retreat, but also because it can be quickly charged up with Welder and used to spread 20 damage across the whole board. Now, because Entei isn't crazy strong by modern standards, you can use Tapu Koko to soften up targets for it pretty easily. Finally, Victini Prism Star is here to help manage our energy supply and give us another big burst of damage. Its one and only attack does 20 damage times the number of basic energy cards in the discard pile, and then shuffles them all back into the deck. Which is handy, because we're going to be burning through our energies like crazy, meaning Victini is alive a lot more than you might think. Over on the trainer side, the most important ones here are Welder, Giant Hearth, and Heat Factory Prism Star. Welder is your energy acceleration and draw power all rolled into one, allowing you to pay for eruption in basically one turn. Giant Hearth lets you ditch a card from your hand to grab two fire energies from your deck, and Heat Factory lets you pitch a fire energy to draw three cards. This core of trainer cards is the secondary engine of our deck, right after Mag Cargo and Orangaroo. Other notable mentions include Field Blower to help get rid of annoying tools and stadiums, Muscle Band to hit a little harder in a pinch, and Palpad to recover our welders or the one-off Guzma that we've got. Otherwise, I've basically tweaked the ratios of the staple cards we have, mostly to max out on important things like Nest Ball and Ultra Ball. Oh, and Fire Energy. We have a lot of Fire Energy because between powering up Entei and hitting Eruption's bonus damage, we're just going to need a lot of energy, generally. And that's the deck in a nutshell. It's a pretty modest upgrade to the theme deck, and will be a good starting point for any fire deck you might want to build in the future. Now, let's hop on over to PTCGO's expanded ladder, and see if we can make Entei go boom.
And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Entei is a surprisingly solid attacker, and can definitely hold its own against a field of big, scary multi-prizers. Honestly, I was actually surprised at how well the Magcargo and Oranguru engine was able to give me the answers I needed to the kind of complicated situations that came up in those two matches. Pairing an Omni Search with a powerful and efficient attacker like Entei is apparently a recipe for success. That said, if I had to look at where the deck needs to be improved, uh, I think one place I would start is upping the Slugma count and finding room for one or two more draw supporters. Welder is nice, but since the first few turns are usually focused on setup anyway, it couldn't hurt to have a Cynthia or something else on hand to keep the hand full. Also, I will say that this deck doesn't have the best comeback game. Complex strategies like this can be fragile, and it's very easy to lose ground quickly if you don't get all your pieces on the board in the first two to three turns. Now, if you guys have any ideas about how you might have upgraded the theme deck, please leave them in the comments below. This series is kind of a back-to-basics refresher for me, so any and all advice is more than welcome. And of course, deck building like this is some of the best fun you can have, so please do share your ideas for making Entei a bigger and badder deck boss. And that'll about wrap it up for this week. If you enjoy the show, please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Personally, I have to say I'm really enjoying trying so many different things out here on the channel, and it's reassuring to see so many of you show up every week to kind of go along with my zany ideas. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, uh, consider sharing it with someone who might like it too. You know, there's this fun little corner of Poketube that I kind of consider myself a part of now, and it's nice to see it growing day by day. And, you know, the best way to grow it is by sharing cool stuff that you see. So, hey, if you have a minute, please share the show with someone who might think, yeah, this is cool. And now, okay, I'm really going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and until next time... <laughs>